Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, the Democratic Party has welcomed the Cheney family into its ranks. Both Liz Cheney and her father, former Republican Vice President Dick Cheney, announced that they would be voting for Kamala Harris. Here was Liz Cheney explaining that decision. I, I'm certainly not a Trump Republican. I am a conservative. Um, I think that, that what's happened to the Republican Party today um, it, you know, is, is, uh, is indefensible. And I hope to be able to rebuild, uh, as I said, after this, after this cycle. But I also think it's really important for us as we're thinking about rebuilding, as we're thinking about the future of the country, to recognize that, that, that at the end of the day, the vast majority of people in this country um, want to know fundamentally that, that their elected officials are gonna defend the peaceful transfer of power and that they are gonna put the Constitution first and, and as someone is, you know, who's been a lifelong Republican, um, it's heartbreaking to me to see what has happened to so many of the elected officials in my party, and, and I know we can do better. So look, I agree with Liz Cheney that Donald Trump's antics around the 2020 election were not good. They were not even good for his reelection chances, frankly. Um, but that said, you know, the Cheney, the idea that the Cheneys are some appealing or like morally upstanding, I mean, from a Democratic standpoint, the ideal that they are is crazy because the Democrats have spent years and years and years portraying Dick Cheney as Darth Vader and like this singular force of evil. And then Trump arrived on the scene and all the previous um, uh, metaphors that Democrats in the mainstream media had used to describe Republicans seemed insufficient to them because they'd already used all the most negative things and they're like, wish we had saved them for Trump. But, uh, you know, even from a, my own libertarian standpoint, I don't think Dick Cheney's influence on the Republican Party was particularly good. Uh, that was the Republican Party at its most interventionist, at its most kind of big government, um, both domestically and then especially abroad, which brought the party to ruin, as it was not an agenda that actual rank and file Republicans supported, whether you're like a Tea Party conservative or the new right people or libertarians or whatever. No one wanted this version of the party that was mostly concerned about rebuilding the Middle East under the intellectual leadership, the ideological leadership of Dick Cheney. And that's why I don't even believe what she's saying there. I don't think her or her father's fundamental concern is about quote unquote democracy, which by the way, is not even a top five issue in the polls for voters at this point. So for her to say that that's what sure. most people are thinking about when they're going to the polls Absolutely is just not. wrong. Um, but these are individuals who have dedicated their careers to neoconservatism, to the grifting military industrial complex, to the United States democracy building around the world and getting involved in regime change wars. And I think they recognize, whether it's good or bad, that Trump doesn't support that. In 2015, one of the early things he said on the campaign trail, uh, the immigration stuff got a lot of attention, obviously. But he also talked about ending the war in Afghanistan and pulling troops out of Syria. Um, and he was in active negotiation to withdraw from Afghanistan when he lost the 2020 election. Um, that's something that resonates really deeply with working class Americans because ultimately it's their kids who have to go off and fight and die in these wars in the most extreme cases, like the 13 families who lost their children in the Abbey Gate bombing during Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan. And people like the Cheneys, Adam Kinzinger, uh, Bill Kristol, some of these other never Trump Republicans, all coincidentally are from that neoconservative wing of the party. And I just think it's, it's bottom line, they're upset that the United States is not going to carry on their foreign policy legacy. Yeah, they're upset that they lost the uh, ideological struggle for the trajectory of the Republican Party on that front. And that has now made them, this made them Democrats, because if you want to continue those policies, it's the uh, Democrats who are, you know, so upset with the trajectory of the party vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and Russia and what Trump and those kinds of people represent. Um, but it's just important to remember that those, those populists, particularly the Middle East policies, were just never popular with um, with Republicans. It's not what they wanted from their elected Republicans to prioritize regime change, as you said, that was that was costly, that cost American lives, got a lot of people killed over there. 
did not make the Middle East more stable and secure, did not benefit our own security. I mean, most people wish we could go back and undo, particularly the decisions in Iraq, do something probably different in Afghanistan, even though the, the, the strike was justified, given that they had attacked us, but that it didn't really help to be involved there for years and years and years, at when we, we eventually ended up leaving anyway. And that's, you know, the legacy of, of the Cheneys who, who argued for the, for the Iraq war based on information that ended up being wrong. You know, you can debate whether they, some people will say they deliberately lied about it, it was misleading, whether they were just wrong. Either way, they were, they were not correct. That intelligence did not pan out that um, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and we were under threat from them and we needed to depose him. We all wish we hadn't done that because then Islamic extremism actually festers when you removed the secular dictators that were in charge of some of these countries. These people, don't have much influence, not just in the Republican Party, but I think on the broader American electorate. And while the mainstream media and perhaps some of the Democrats are treating this like some huge coup d'etat of yeah. the GOP, it, I think it just demonstrates how little they actually understand about what the Trump movement was about and the fundamental transformation that's taken place in both the Republican Party and the conservative movement. Otherwise, they would want to be as far away from these people as humanly possible. Of course, this also doesn't benefit the Democratic base, which is becoming more progressive every single year. I'm just confused as to who they think these people are appealing to. I mean, even among independents, uh, foreign policy is not really a top issue for voters right now. And the Cheneys are not exactly uh, people with the best approval ratings, even among moderates. So it's like, what? It, what is even the point of this? Someone on uh, social media, I think it was Zed Jelani, pointed out that when Joe Rogan endorsed Bernie Sanders, there was pressure, a quasi-endorsement, it wasn't even like an official endorsement, quasi-endorsed Bernie Sanders. There was pressure, uh, uh, Sanders got pressure from like liberals and progressives to, to um, reject that endorsement because of the controversial views of Joe Rogan that don't fully align with Democrats on like, I don't know, transgender stuff or COVID or whatever it was at the time. Um, but you're not seeing any pressure for Kamala Harris to reject That's the a great explicit point. Cheney family endorsement from liberals, even though obviously from a liberal perspective, they should have or would have considered Dick Cheney worse than Joe Rogan. It's, cr it's funny. That is a great point. I mean, they really did say that this guy was a war criminal. He needed to be in jail. Uh, that he was responsible for killing millions of brown people, I think is how they phrase it. Yeah. Um, and now to be parading now him that's around. An oopsie. oopsie. Yeah. Too bad. Too bad. So sad. <laughs> it's it's crazy. I mean, this is like the um, sort of bizarre side effect of the political realignment that's been happening in America for the past ten years. Is that you also get a even more nonsensical realignment between neoconservatives yeah. and neoliberals. Yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. Well, and it happens both ways because uh, RFK Jr., Tulsi, now Republicans, uh, a Kennedy has moved into the Republican fold, and uh, the Cheneys have moved into the Democratic fold. It's just the, the push and pull of, uh, of politics. People's uh, bumper stickers from back in the days would no longer make any sense. <laughs> no. I, well, you're not a real conservative, as Liz Cheney says, unless you vote for the person who disagrees with you on 95% of the issues. All right, there you go. That does it for us today on Free Media. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be back with more content next week. Thank you.